The World Pool Masters is a very special event. It's never going to be an easy match or an easy draw. It's called the World Pool Masters for a reason. For years I've been trying to win it. I finally won it in 2007. This year I would like to win it again. It would be a nice topping on the cake, as uh, I think that's the saying in English. You can catch gear and snap it off, it would be great. If I can pick the trophy up in front of my own fans, to be up there with winning the World Nine Ball Championship. It's semi-finals time here at the Party Poker World Pool Masters. Nine ball pool's most elite knockout competition, where you have to beat the best to be the best over four fiercely competitive matches. Niels Fyan has played three of those four, running out an 8-2 quarter-final winner over former World and Masters champion Alex Pagulayan. He now eagerly awaits the outcome of semi-final number two between Taiwan's number one, Chang Junglin, and the former world number one and twice world champion Darren Appleton. My last match I broke really well. Felt a lot more comfortable in the uh, with myself, and the, uh, when when I was down in the shot, I felt really good. So I, I'm hoping that I'm going to keep that form now going into the next game. The key is to get off to a good start, try and, try and get your break going and keep control of the table and try and put my opponent under pressure and with the home crowd uh, on my side I'm hoping that's going to give uh, me the edge and it's going to put a little bit more pressure on him. I know Chang really well, uh, in my opinion he's a, he's a top four player in the world, he's won a lot of tournaments, uh, world eight ball champion, Japan open champion, he's been around a long time, he's like probably the best player from uh, Taiwan. Taiwan's a not bad for pool, there's a lot of great players over there. So obviously I know it's going to be tough, but luckily I, I've played him maybe three or four times and I've never lost to him. And I recently beat him in the World Games Final 11-10 and that was a lot, a lot of drama there. Uh, so I'm hoping uh, it won't it not be quite as close today, but hopefully I can get the win and uh, get to that final. Obviously I'm uh, sort of visioned winning the thing. Uh, obviously that's what I'm, I'm here to try and do, but obviously I've got to take care of business in the semi-final against uh, Mr Chang. Obviously he's a great player. so. Uh, just try my best against him and hopefully I can get to the final and that would be great, great, great for the British fans and uh, obviously myself. I think Darren Appleton is a very capable player and not easy to beat. So it's hard to say who will win, but I will try my very best. The opening two racks were shared between these two players at the very top of their game. Chang won the lag, but handed control to Appleton with an illegal break. To the delight of the crowd, the home favourite took his chance and ran out the rack. In the next, Appleton missed a relatively easy pot on the three ball. That led to a safety exchange, which his opponent Chang got the better of, eventually levelling the match at 1-1, here in the semi-final of the World Pool Masters. Well, we expected this to be very evenly contested. Appleton, I think, has to be regarded as the favourite. Just has the edge in terms of the standard of pool he's produced to get here. But Chang is a very capable competitor. I only hope, Phil, it's going to be as close as it Chaco. was in the final of the World Games played in Colombia earlier this year. They met in the final. Appleton came out the winner. 11-10, the score in the end. But as you said, Darren Appleton, especially in his match against Shane Van Boning, he looked flawless and said himself in the post-match interview that was the best that he was hitting the ball since a year. Yes, the prize over there in Cali in Colombia was a gold medal. Appleton was very proud to wear it 
the price here well the first prize in the tournament is 20,000 US dollars if you get to the final it's 10,000 losing semi-finalists receive 5,000 US dollars and so basically this match and indeed the next it's a case of double your money as Chang pushes out tricky push out very difficult cut shot on the two but the possibility to make the nine caroming off the two ball I don't think I agree with the speed he played it with it was a tricky push out because your opponent forces you to take a risk as you don't want him to go for a winner even though it's a super tough shot but had he played it harder the chance of separating the cue ball on the two would have been bigger well a possible 3-9 combination here and he needs maximum viewing time and so consequently immediately the two ball went in he requested his 35 second extension 35 second shot clock in operation in this tournament in every match but each player in every rack has the option of taking one extension and that's a big miss not saying it was a sitter the 3-9 combination because they're very missable but this was a huge chance to hurt Darren Appleton winning the racks off of a push out situation is an optimal chance to hurt your opponent throughout this tournament from the comments made by the crowd you can tell so many of them are willing in every single ball it would be the most popular victory in the history of the Whirlpool Masters of that there's no doubt had to leave himself an angle on the five but he has a natural route it looks like at least to come around to six and roll into the eight ball but he's drawing in between the six eight nicely done most of the times in nine ball you have multiple shot selections a couple of ways to play position and a player will use that type of shot that gives him the best margin for error but also the sort of stroke that he prefers for example Appleton he likes to punch the balls where Ralph Suke will float the ball a little more personal preference I think if Appleton were to prevail in the tournament and go on all the way to lift the trophy he would regard it as a personal highlight we're here in Barnsley not too far from his birthplace and he's making the most of home soil advantage this rack was all about one shot Chang took on the combination it was misjudged and from there Appleton stepped in so Back difficult four. to Darren aim Appleton those three. combinations you need to try and find a spot on the rail and then hold that spot while aiming yes that's yes, but don't think he has a shot here he's breaking very consistent this tournament this definitely an advantage for Appleton Cheng Jun Ling slightly less consistent safety is relatively easy to nestle the cue ball behind the nine 
possibly he can play a 2-9 combination. No, he's playing the safety like this. One or two rail escape for Cheng Jun Lin. Two rails is less sensitive. Less sensitive to the delivery of the shot. Played with a lot of confidence and actually made a great hit but didn't get lucky. Did play to hit the top side of the two to get that cue ball back up table. Accuracy and sweet queuing required here for position from two to three. A nice long backswing and a smooth delivery. Didn't quite get into the cue ball enough. And that's why he made quite a thick contact with the six. A glancing blow off the six, that would have been fine. But not that. The shot on the three is still on. With a natural route towards the four. Could play to run into the four and if he misses, Extension he'll go cold. in between the four seven. Oh, very nice shot, beautiful shot, managed to check the cue ball, this is perfect, could also have hit the seven. Great call Alex, and a very good shot indeed from Appleton. It wasn't the best of positioning on the three, but now everything entirely retrieved. Well actually the shot that I called was a a shot, a less courageous shot, just to make the three, run into the four and then see what happens from there. He played a more positive shot with inside English, check side. Shot of a champion. Very positive. Not the cleanest of pots that, but never mind. The table at his mercy. 2-1, you have to think, is about to become 3-1. Barnsley Metrodome cheering section are in a loud voice. The reason Appleton leads 3 1. Welcome back to the Party Poker Whirlpool Masters, where Darren Appleton's cushion is now four clear racks. He broke and ran out in the fifth and pounced again when Chang missed the two ball early in the sixth. Is there any stopping this man? We're about to find out. Thank you, rack seven. Darren Appleton to break, leading five racks to one. Settle down, please. In fairness to Chang, the two ball he missed. In rack number six, wasn't easy. But every time you get a chance against a man in this kind of form, you feel you have to take it. Actually, an uncharacteristic miss Which by Chang called. tells you the amount of respect he has for Darren Appleton because it's just that the pressure of the occasion and of the opponent. Appleton weighing his options for a push out. If he leaves a window between the 7 and 8, Chang could cut the 2-ball in, but without a future of playing shape on the 4-ball. 
subsequently he would need to play a safety out of this position and this is a tall order maybe hit the two ball a little thick now he's looking to play a bank shot very aggressive Tubal never stopped rolling. I understand the concept. 5 1 down, go for an aggressive shot. And that Tubal could have hit the 6 to leave nothing on for Darren. I'm thinking if I like Chang's shot selection could have been an option had he been able to control the speed of the two ball better. I suspect some passive aggression by Chang after that missed two ball. So much riding on this for Appleton, apart from the financial considerations. And as the shot clock winds down there, decides to take his extension quite wisely. Yes, apart from the money, apart from the fact he wants to please his home support, there's also history in the making, perhaps. We've talked about this being the 21st season of the Whirlpool Masters few multiple winners of this title. Ralph Suke, he's donned the crown on six occasions. Francisco Bustamante from the Philippines twice. Thomas Engert from Germany twice. So Appleton would be only the fourth player to be a repeat champion at the Masters. Sinking the nine for a six one lead. Chang has lost grip on this match and Appleton cruising towards the final. Well, they call him the Dazzler and he's been dazzling. Living up to his reputation. Never an easy thing to do on home soil. Keep back eight. <clears throat> Darren Appleton to break. Leading six racks to one. Unbelievable. The tenacity of Darren Appleton. The balance that he shows between head, heart and arm. The character, the skill and the tactical brain has made him to win multiple US Open titles, world titles in nine ball and ten ball. The Challenge of Champions, World Pool Masters, all within seven years. Push out cold. It's amazing to understand what this man is capable of. And so many amateur psychologists in the crowd here saying, head up, don't worry, you're okay. Giving all kinds of advice. It can be a little bit of sensory overload at times. One thing Appleton didn't want to hear, one of his supporters saying, whoa, when the green was moving, when in fact he wanted it to move a little more. That's the blocking ball. He's looking to play a push out. Actually, could be a consideration to kick the two ball from here and play a safety from there, but last time he played a push out, Chang went for a very aggressive sh aggressive shot a wild one so why not try the same recipe and actually he can play the identical shot go for the double you set the clock 
but this time it's easier to control the speed of the two ball to make it come to a halt somewhere in the middle touching the long rail money in the bank when you can bank like that well it tells me that Cheng's observation is, is damaged somewhat he's shell shocked I think because the previous shot on the two which he took on was more difficult than this one even with the cue ball on the rail Just a simple stop shot on the four now. <laughs> Hasn't managed to freeze to the nine, nine ball, but actually doesn't matter because from where the four is, it's a two rail shot hitting the short rail first that presents itself best. And there was a classic illustration. For all of you just taking up this game of pool, even the very best, they aren't content. Extension call. We're just going for everything. They quite willing to win racks in one, two, three visits, whatever it takes. Play the right shot. Don't push out the boat. Chang's not considering the two rail shot. Don't exactly understand why he played it like this. Much harder to hit the ball. Probably perceived a better future when contacting the four. Born and raised in the town of Pontefract, Darren Appleton, famous for its horse racing track. This is a, a racing certainty, the way he's playing. There's a sense of inevitability when he comes to the table with a chance to clear. Never seems to let anyone down. He's very much in that mythical zone at the moment. said something very important to me there Phil never seems to let anyone ever down of course sometimes he produces below par but on average he always delivers he's one of those players that can produce a, a solid game on command can grind matches but can play in the flow as well Barnsley Appleton on the brink of the final. Rack nine, Darren Appleton to break, leading seven racks to one. In the quarterfinals of the Party Poker World Pool Masters, Darren Appleton was an 8 3 winner over Shane Van Boning. I was just about to say this could be even more comfortable let's look where the balls come to rest first hmm one ball not being his best friend push out cold and we're gonna see the third consecutive wreck starting with a push out thus far winning Appleton winning every safety battle from the push out so he must be feeling confident
dangerous position needs to be cautious the five and eight the seven and nine giving a lot of perspective for any type of safety shot so he here leaves Chang only a thin cut on the one ball and then two rails towards the three ball and there's no zone to snooker the cue ball so it's technically a difficult shot with not so much future it's not going to be a deadly safety therefore he lets Appleton back at the table Very tricky shot this is. Stand Can even top. risk to scratch in the top right hand pocket. Lucky outcome there for Darren Appleton. Wasn't the best of push out shots, but has not paid a price for it. Now comes the Chang jumpstick. He's quite a tall individual, Alex. Is that a benefit with this kind of shot? Especially with the position of the cue ball. It's easier when that cue ball is closer to the rail. Good reach, good cue ball, no pot, but a safety yet. Some sort of trouble here for Appleton. Well, Appleton acknowledged the fact he'd been fortunate two shots ago. Chang didn't. Maybe that's something to do with the scoreline. Looking at a two rail kick shot. And coming in from that angle, he has a lot of chance to resave the ball or at least not leave a shot to Chang. Hurried on the execution there. Yes, very rarely does the sh shot clock influence shots greatly. There it most certainly did. He'd used his extension, so as the beeps came in, panic set in. But I could still qualify this as a slight lapse of concentration. A lapse of concentration to keep an eye on that shot clock. We saw the same against Shane van Boning. Darren Appleton played perfect, played flawless. Just one shot, that 3-9 combination in that quarter-final that he missed. I suppose pool purists would argue against the shot clock, but I think it's a very good addition. Mm. You don't want to make it too severe, obviously, in terms of the time allotted. But 35 seconds, I think, gets the, the match flowing without being too gimmicky. Well, I think it's a great asset, the shot clock, and I think especially with when it becomes crunch time, when the match is close, you'll see the more experienced and more knowledgeable players gaining advantage from the shot clock. Because in the end it's all about quick decision making and recognizing shots swiftly. And as we've said, 35 seconds shouldn't really pose too great a problem. And of course, there's always the, the safety valve of the extension for both players in each rack.
for most of the time you don't really realize it's there but in this rack it's definitely had a major influence and a negative influence for Appleton so if the nine ball goes in it's one down for Chang but another six to go is this the start of the Houdini like escape Appleton was definitely rushed on the attempt to kick on the one and from there Chang ran out two ball travels and Chang is presented with a shot but what a stroke he needs to produce here queuing over the eight ball and he needs to come back if he wants to have some sort of shot on the three speed is all about length in the stroke and a smooth delivery with a long backswing and a long follow through it's not about muscle power got the backspin on the ball managed to get close to the three and I even think he has a perfect angle extension call no it's a very tricky angle sometimes this is the only thing you can do make the ball get close to the next ball and see how you go from there was able to squeeze the three ball past the nine in mid table for the five so maybe this comeback is going to continue and as Alex has mentioned before Darren Appleton has been the subject the victim of an extraordinary comeback in the past in a very high profile contest well final indeed against Lee He Wen so he knows that no match is under lock and key until that final nine ball finds the pocket has overrun the mark for the six ball can he hold it or does he need to go around table three rails Yeah, good shot. Sometimes I found it difficult to maintain my focus if when being down in a match so far I suddenly start hitting the ball all right. You have a tendency to think, oh well, too little, too late. But in a winter break format, it's n never too late. Yes, we're not going to sit here and try to hoodwink anyone and say it's likely that Chang is going to win after that wonderful positional shot from 7 to 8. Very good. It's not likely he's going to win. But don't discount the possibility. Stranger things have happened. Not too often, but they have. And they've happened in the final of this tournament when Raj Hundal was crowned champion in 2005. He was in just as deep a hole as this. Renewed hope for Chang. The application of the killer touch. That's what Darren Appleton wants to do. But the old cliche in Q Sports, the last frame, the last rack, sometimes is the hardest to win. Chang clinging onto that. Illegal break, control passes. Illegal break, he pocketed two balls, but 
a third ball failed to find a pocket or pass the head string. Illegal. Illegal break. Illegal break. Control passes. Control passes, but there's no clear view on the two ball. So Appleton decided to remain seated Push out call. and have Cheng Jun Ling figure it out. It's always a disadvantage to play a push out because with the push out you give choice to your opponent. I've said this before Alex when I've been commentating with you, I think you need to be a very good lateral thinker for being good when it comes to pushing out, knowing what to do and when to do it. A lateral thinker would be like rational choice, game strategy. I think that he thinks that I think it's a good shot. But you made the absolutely salient point earlier on in the tournament. The push out, well it's all about the the time, the place, the opponent. That's the nice thing about the push. It's one of the few shots where you're supposed to play the conditions. Extension cold. Which means that a good decision on one occasion might be an incorrect decision on another. Definitely. When we practice in Holland I also let the guys play a lot of push out situations with two balls on the table the 8 and the 9 for them to learn to understand what a good shot is and a natural safety and what not so strong with the jump cue so strong unbelievable Four rail position, landing perfect on the four. An opportunity to make the score a 7 4. Yes, that jump cue looks like a matchstick in his hand, but quite often it sets light to a rack. It's not a code orange yet for Appleton. But I'm sure he'll be watching next break from Chang with anxiety, presuming Chang will run the remainder of the rack. He was on the threshold of elimination. In fairness, he still is. But coming back from 7-1 down to possibly 7-4, It just makes Appleton a little more uncomfortable. And the discomfort level increases with every rack that Chang wins. And the worst thing to think in the chair is, okay, just take the next chance. Don't start to speculate on the number of chances that you will get in the remainder of the match. It's very, but it's very difficult when your opponent is coming back at you to not think about the outcome, to not think about the finish line. His positional shot onto the nine here left much to be desired. But that part covered up the cracks. And so this Chang Zhongling comeback is maintained. And it was all about the two ball, the jump shot, perfect position, not so on the nine, but he cut it in nevertheless. Rack 12, Chang Zhongling having won the last two push out situations, but will still be preferring to continue after the break. Sink balls and produce an open shot. Not good. Not good. Too many illegal breaks throughout the whole tournament. Yes, that break rule, you have to pop three balls, 
three balls have to go over the head string or a combination of the two and there the required number wasn't met well I've said it m many times and I I'll say it again with the cut break there are two variants one is the soft medium just arm like Cheng did or medium hard a little fuller with body action and the latter is the better one because even then with a, a weaker hit when you miss hit the ball slightly you still make a legal break yes and just to remove any confusion there the reason it was an illegal break okay potted two balls did Chang the one and the six but no other ball went over the head string extension call has a cut shot can play straight forward elevate and draw back or go forward slightly to relieve himself a three rail shot for position on the four yes, yes. Yes. nice spot clean went forward a little too much No, oh, he's jumping. He's overrun the mark. He's behind the eight ball. That's <laughs> a saying now in the English language, isn't it? To denote being in a spot of bother, you're behind the eight ball there Appleton was but he said so what nice touch writings on the wall Alex it looks like being England versus Holland in the final I'm up for it. Niels is, but Appleton needs to keep his act together. This looks good. Just as in the quarter final, one hiccup, but other than that, top pool, A game pool by Darren Appleton. Good breaks, good shot making, and tactical supremacy over Cheng Junling. The roof of the Barnsley Metrodome in danger of being taken off its hinges. Fantastic performance. Everyone expected so much. Darren delivers again there's his girlfriend Angie posing the $20,000 question can her man go all the way that winner breaks tough you know what I mean I'm thinking he uh, if he gets to like 7-5 7-6 I'm under a lot of pressure then so just really happy to win the last game I've, li I've, I've uh, taken a really good clearance out there to win the match so uh, I'm really happy that I feel good under pressure yeah, obviously played Niels uh, many, many, many times. Uh, I've got a good record against him at nine ball and ten ball, but not so good record against him at eight ball. He's having a really good season. Obviously, he's played great to get to the final. I think, in my opinion, the best two players of this competition got to the finals. It's a big title to win, so we obviously both want to win. Uh, I've just got to try and keep the same mindset and break the balls good and hopefully bring it home for the own crowd. Flyan and Appleton. These two have been the pick of the tournament so far. And next time, the European Moscone Cup teammates will go head-to-head -head for the Party Poker World Pool Masters Crown.